We have two days of AI <laughs> and Gen AI and whatever, but you look real. My head is very big in the screen. Added reality too, I suppose. <laughs> we um, have had so much talk about AI in these two days, so we need your okay. opinion. What do you think about the next five to ten years on AI? Please give us a view. Artificial insemination? Artificial intelligence. Yeah. What do you think about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, artificial intelligence is, is, is certainly going to profoundly change the world. One of the most significant ways is self-driving. So we've been putting a lot of effort into self-driving technology for cars. You don't see it quite as much in Europe because we first have to make it work in the U.S. before we increase the complexity of trying to make it elsewhere in the world. But I think we're quite close to having the car be fully autonomous. So for example, like right now, I could, I'm in Austin, and if I wanted to drive, say, to the airport, the car could take me to the airport with no interventions. Using, and all it's using are digital neural nets, in other words, artificial intelligence, and cameras. So there's no LiDAR, radar, nothing. And in fact, if you think about how humans drive cars, humans are biological neural nets, and we use eyes. So it's the eyes and biological neural nets, the analog is digital. The analog for digital is cameras and uh, digital neural nets. This is working remarkably well. The, it has been quite difficult to do this because it turns out that in, in order to use the, in order for this to work, the car has to really be quite fully intelligent. Really, as, as a subset, for example, it has to learn how to read everything and, and, and how to assess intention among drivers and, and pedestrians. Okay. So it's, it's, it's you're, you're not creating sort of a baby artificial general intelligence to solve this, but. This will obviously be extremely profound, and obviously I'm talking about automotive here, I'll get into the broader question in a minute. But the, the average use of a passenger vehicle is only about 10 hours per week out of 100 hours. At the point at which it is autonomous, I think you would see probably a third of the hours being used because it would be like a taxi. Maybe my guess is like 50 to 60 hours, which means that the utility of a passenger vehicle would increase by uh, a factor of five, and this is this is gigantic. But we'll see. So, so that that's the automotive. Then there's what people think have certainly experienced online, where you can ask it a question and ask for an essay or a picture or to understand a picture, and that is progressing rapidly. But what, what I'm seeing in terms of AI compute is I, I've never seen any technology advance faster than this. The the artificial intelligence compute coming online appears to be increasing by a factor of 10 every six months. Like obviously that cannot continue at such a high rate for forever or, or it will exceed the mass of the universe, but I've never seen anything like it. And this is why you see NVIDIA's market cap being so gigantic because they currently have the best neural net chips. I mean, I think the didn't NVIDIA's market cap exceed the GDP of Canada or something recently, and anyway, it was quite high. And <laughs> it may go higher, who knows? The chip rush is bigger than any gold rush that has ever existed. So, and then there will also be robots, like humanoid, humanoid robots, not not just sort of industrial 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 robots. We are of course familiar with. You use industrial robots. We use industrial robots. Everyone does. But they are programmed explicitly, and they don't, they don't walk around. But Tesla, with for example, with the Optimus program, is making a humanoid robot that is capable of doing almost anything a human can do. I mean, I hope I just hope the the robots are nice to us. You know, we hope so. <laughs> we hope so too, Elon, that the robots will be yeah, nice yeah. to us. And maybe let's say in this regard, because you are working on op what can we expect <laughs> of let's say support which is going to come maybe also a little bit with regard to production because in the Bosch Connected world we were also discussing application of AI, Gen AI into production in order to boost yeah. productivity. Maybe a couple of thoughts on this one too. Well, I, the, the plus side of AI is that I think productivity will increase dramatically. So across every field, whether it be manual labor to supply chain logistics, there's already a lot of movement to use chatbots, like sophisticated chatbots for customer service, for example, where they can answer quite quite complex questions already. But I, I mean, I think we really are on the edge of probably the biggest technology revolution that has ever existed. You know, there's supposedly a sort of a Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, we live in the most interesting of times, the most interesting. And for, for a while there, I was a little bit, it was making me a bit, a bit depressed, frankly, because I was like, well, will we be, will they take over? Will we be useless? But then the way that I reconciled myself to this question was, would I rather be alive to see the AI apocalypse or not? And I'm like, I guess I'd like to see this. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good thought. Going to be boring. Because, uh, that's a good thought because you mentioned it every six months. That's an exponential curve, right? Exponential curves are beautiful, like but there's so? kind of a question: Where does it ever end, right? Do you see any end yet, or will it go on for three, four, five years like this? Because then we talk hundred folds, right? Thousand folds of time. Yeah, that, that's why I said obviously. You, you, yeah, I mean, you, you can't, you can't grow at that rate without quickly exceeding the mass of the universe. So clearly it's going to hit some constraints. The constraints that AI compute are very predictable. I've actually predicted this over a year ago. So over a year ago, the shortage was chips, neural net chips. Then I, I, it was very easy to predict that the, the, the next shortage will be voltage step-down transformers. So it's, you get, you've got to feed the power to these things. So if you've got 100 to 300 kilovolts coming out of your, a utility and it's got to step all the way down to you know, 0.6 volts, that's a lot of stepping down. So now we're in step down, and I, this is my not that funny joke, which is that they need transformers to run transformers. Because, you know, the AI is like, there's this thing called a transformer in AI. It's a it's a neural, a neural I don't know, it's a combination of sort of neural nets, and they're running out of transformers to run transformers. Then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity, that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. I mean, w during the chip crisis, we certainly all did have many contacts for Unfortunately, we were able to master it together. Of course, we all would like uh, to avoid a second chip crisis. But with regard to your, to your comment on, on power demand, we all know today vehicles have three uh, to four kilowatt power demand for the peripherals. But this is continuously going up. And Tesla has recently launched the Cybertruck, which I believe is mostly coming with 48 volt. Do you see this as yeah. a, let's say, further disruption of automotive industry, <clears throat> another technology change within automotive? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, the, the automotive industry has been living with 12 volts for a very long time, a century roughly. I think it, it started off as six volts, and then they needed a, a more powerful starter motor, and then they doubled it to 12 volts, although... It's, it's actually more like 13.7 volts. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and the bus voltage actually varies a lot for those, since there are probably some electrical engineers in the audience. <laughs> it's like 12 volts is a very rough approximation. But it's, 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 really, it's really kind of an arbitrary low voltage. And if you look at, say, power Ethernet, it, it's running at 50 volts or roughly 48 volts. And we set it at 40, 48 volts because anything really above that, you start to run into regulatory concerns. And, and power Ethernet is, like I said, roughly at that level. But the advantage of obviously quadrupling the voltage is that you can substantially reduce how much copper uh, or, or conductor is used right. in the car. So you can use very small copper wires for, you know, it's a rough, roughly... A roughly a quarter, not exactly a quarter, but roughly a quarter as much as, as much copper is needed for 48 volts as for 12. So I think it's a, it's a logical move. That's, that's really the next step for the low voltage architecture for the car. I think ultimately long term all cars will be 48. It's, it's interesting that many people love electric vehicles and want to have them, but some are harmed by a missing infrastructure. There's a race between infrastructure and technology right now. And uh, you're also certain technology may win, which is a problem because actually infrastructure should win. We should have all the infrastructure we need. Is that correct? Yeah. Are you talking about like sort of charging infrastructure for cars and that kind of Kind of thing well the, the reason tesla developed the sort of global supercharger network was specifically to address that point and the point you're making which is people need to be comfortable that they can travel long distances and charge their car wherever they go unfortunately electricity is, is almost everywhere and so it you know it's, just, it's not well not all that rare unless you're really far out in the countryside or something so yeah you, you need the super you need, you need you need the charging infrastructure and to the electricity to, to charge electric cars. In fact, the, the, the simultaneous growth of electric cars and AI, both of which need electricity, both of which need voltage transformers, actually, I think, is creating a, a tremendous demand for electrical equipment and for electrical power generation. Maybe one more question, Elon, with regard to new vehicle designs coming to the market. Of course, you cannot share with us confidential secrets, but, but anyways... What are the things you believe, let's say, we will see over the next years in the market? And maybe just a small comment. In Europe, we see a shortage of affordable battery electric vehicles in the offerings uh, because many people in Europe 
are only able to spend like 20,000, 25,000 euros for their vehicles. So, so what are the new vehicle types, vehicle designs you, you are thinking about at Tesla? Well, our next generation vehicle will be a, a low a lower cost vehicle. Also, that is very focused on autonomy. Like I said, the, we, we really are getting to the point where the car can drive itself well. When you're in the in the US, I would recommend perhaps giving, you know, trying out our car and see, seeing how it works. It's remarkable, you know, as the AI gets better and better, it actually feels quite human-like in the way that it drives. It, it does things that you wouldn't expect a computer to do. It, it's, it's not like a robot dancing, you know, it's like it feels smooth and, and intuitive. So our next generation vehicle, which we're quite far along on, is, is very much anticipating autonomy. And then of course, we've got some fun things as well, like on our, the new Tesla roads, which will be able to do zero to 100 kilometers in under one second. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, that's, that's good news. Need. That's good news. That's, so we're doing some fun stuff too, you know. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the dessert. That's the cherry on the cake. But it's, it's fun. You're going to have fun stuff too. Yeah. Right. No, that's very good news because in the end, there's a lot of people here in the room that still are on the list to buy an electric vehicle and you just announced something which they probably want to buy. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Right. And uh, thank you extremely for 15 years of partnership and work together. We're inspired always yeah. by your speed, attitude, aggressiveness, and things come out. Thank you very much to Elon Musk. All right. And thank you for your support. Very much appreciated.